Inside. You know? Yeah. Is that us, Sean? Yes, thank you. That, that young man, James Connor Patterson, on his way. A poet of quite some excellence and also a man of uh, insights and a man of a maturity that belies his, his years, really. With me now uh, in studio, you're very, very welcome, Chris Ruddy from the, uh, uh, from the Men's Sheds. Well, you're not from the Men's Sheds, but you're an aficionado of Men's Sheds. You're someone who enjoys the concept, and it's about recreational activity as we grow older. Yes, uh, among other things. It, the Men's Shed, uh, basically, it is based on the concept of many years ago that men needed a place on a Sunday afternoon to escape and if they were lucky enough to have an actual shed built at the bottom of their garden they disappeared with the newspaper whether they took their tea or their wee can of beer or not they went down and they footered about footering they footered about it's a footering space it is absolutely <laughs> it um, you know it, it, it was away from the, the wife it was away from the children it was away from the general melee of a Sunday and it was peace and quiet so um, historically in the 90s in the early 90s in Australia there was a big push on health because they found that there was a disparity between the mortality rates of men and the mortality rates of women and generally men were six times more likely to die wow. um, of various well, well I'm, I'm going to say prostate and lung cancer sort of associate cancers associated yeah. um, with men and also mental health depression wow. Australia being such a wide country and a relatively new country men didn't have the place to go they didn't have the physiological want to go to doctors to talk mm. about problems to mm. go to each other mm. to talk about problems so the the government the governments in Australia decided that it was a worthwhile venture so they backed financially and also with premises mm -hmm. um, the, the setting up of Men's Shed yeah. and it, it's gone it's from 1996 gone I think the first shed was set up. So pr presumably it's, it's not outside the, the modus operandi uh, of, of, of the organisation that men will talk about their health, they talk about anything really. Men will talk about anything, w one of the sort of things that come out one of the statements that come out was men don't talk face to face they talk shoulder to shoulder and if you can imagine it's in the toilet mm. you're standing oh yeah. you're shoulder to shoulder you're at a football match you're shoulder mm. to shoulder mm. you're at a bar you're shoulder to shoulder but to get a man to face another man yeah. and talk about something yeah. serious something worrying it was very hard it was in man's psyche that we don't do that because we are the strong, yeah. the stronger of the sexes. So they say, and I don't agree with that. Uh, no, <laughs> no, <do> I. <laughs> my I wife mean, will kill me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, the, the, the it migrated then from Australia across the world. It migrated ac uh, across the world. Uh, at the moment, Ireland is actually a very big. They they have bought into it great. Um, Australia, um, in this last maybe uh, sixteen years, have something in the region of nine hundred main sheds. In the whole of Ireland, we have over 200 oh men sheds, and we were the next to Australia. We were the next biggest mm. uh, sort of group that took up men uh, sheds. And where does the local branch of men sheds meet? At the moment, we meet in the Wynn Industrial Estate. We have a small unit in the Wynn Industrial Estate, um, but that could all well change in the next three weeks because our funding has dried up. Mm. Um, we went into the shed approximately seven, eight months ago, um, and the, the shed was a development of Matt. If you've heard um, men, men about the town, about the town, exactly. Yeah. Well, men, men about the town had been going for four to five years now. But, but that, that was wasn't that a fairly uh, unofficial, gentle little gathering of local lads of a certain age? It certainly was. Yeah. And they're in. It, it, it wasn't a problem, but it, it was quite limited. It was very sedentary. The, the group met on a Tuesday morning, every Tuesday morning. In the library? In the old Abbey School oh on yeah. Abbey Yard. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, up where the U3A is. Up where U3A is, and yeah. we were actually above U3A. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was limited in the fact that it, uh, they met on a Tuesday morning and they read the papers, they had wee discussions, a cup of coffee, biscuits, and then an occasional um, trip 
I mean, uh -huh. for instance, a recent one was the Crumlin Road Jail. Yeah. Um, and w there was a bit of um, training or education put in as well in relation to mm. uh, men's health issues. There were a lot of younger men who were retired, and really they had more get up and go that they wanted to actually be doing something more mm. strenuous and something mm. more physical. Mm. Thus, the men shed sort of it it. it just came out of Matt. It was a yeah. um, a more active version of Matt. Uh -huh. So and was, yeah. yes, and it, it was there. Where are you on the men's sheds thing? Are you, are you, are you a practitioner or are you a, a, a kind of organizer of it? What's your role in it? Um, at the moment, I am the coordinator of the shed, yeah. and thus I'm supposed to be have a handle on absolutely everything that's happening in relation yeah. to the shed. Um, as you probably know, when you're dealing with older people that have life experience, mm -hmm. people tend to be in their own uh, way of working, way of living, yeah. and sometimes it's hard to teach a, an old dog new tricks. Oh, absolutely. So sometimes we do have things going on in isolation. However, teething problems, mm -hmm. th that's all we're putting them down to. I also attend and thoroughly enjoy the uh, the sedentary part of it, the sitting and the having a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. the, the, the subjects covered are... Uh, so wide and mm -hmm. so disparate that you you wouldn't believe some of the things that come up. Mm -hmm. We have some experts on Irish history, we have experts on history of the World War. Um, we have people, uh, about maybe a month ago, I took a very basic course in digital photography, oh. which has outgrown the group. So now we've had to employ um, someone to come in and teach yeah. us digital photography. Yeah. It was something the men wanted to do. Yeah. Not just point and shoot, yeah. but be a wee bit Why experimental. We talked about the U3A a moment ago. Uh, would this not be more easily assimilated into a U3A kind of situation? Right. Wh why not, I suppose the question is. Right, okay. And uh, as a joke this morning when I was leaving the house, my wife said, right, good luck. And I said, ah, don't worry, you know, I'm going to go in and I'm going to stir the effluent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 sadly, Rowan, sadly, Rowan, Rowan, there are, uh, for each district council in the north of Ireland, yeah. the councils are supporting the main shed, a yeah. main shed, mm -hmm. with the exception of Newry, Newry oh. Moore, with the exception of Newry Moore. Now, in our wee area of Newry City, there are three men's sheds. Every other, bear in mind, every other council area has one supported by the council. Newry has three and partnership and working with partnership we are finding it very difficult yeah and i will include you three in that as well yeah so i have to say so the the, the reason for working with partnership is it because of your the exclusivity the exclusive nature of what you do or is it a, is it down just to a a clash of philosophies well, the main shed philosophy, it is so wide. You know, if you were to ask me, what is the ethos of the main shed? I'll say back to you, the main shed is what the members want it to be. Yeah. Full stop. Mm. I mean, the, a lot of the main sheds, we have visited both in the north and the south, and they're quite uh, employment geared. I mean, we, th there were a number of sheds, excellent run and meeting the needs of the, uh, the membership. However, in Newry, I mean, our eldest person is 88 years of age, uh -huh. and that person who has worked all their lives doesn't want to go into, you know, nine o'clock, there's your worksheet, you have to produce oh this no. by, f that's yeah. going back to work again. Oh, yeah. So our main shed, the ethos of our main shed is basically, it's, it's education, I mean, I have to say, and that's on health, yeah. health education, physical yeah. and mental education. Yeah. Uh, we also do social where men can just get away and if you want to get involved in a discussion read the papers you do if you don't whatever and then we've got the sort of um, education in relation to uh, technology mm. digital photography yeah, that's of the other computers yeah like absolutely yeah. again a, a big a lot of the men have never worked a computer and are <laughs> very um sort of reticent about getting into it because it's frightened of it yeah indeed indeed it's new technology to them I, am, yeah. I have to say I'm the same I can open a computer email and I can do an, an odd yeah. bit but certainly I would love to, to learn more um, and also but then we have experts sort of doctors consultants coming in and talking about men's uh, issues uh -huh. uh, and again specifically the cancers but that are yeah. that men are more likely but to. but in a situation where uh, you're not being supported by the local council uh, is that a com uh, downright refusal for lack of money or whatever, or is 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 it work still in progress that they're 
uh, being being convinced of the importance of the organisation. Yes, uh, the it, it is more a work in progress. We we did sort of ap approach the local council at the beginning of the year um, with no real outcome. Yeah. Um, we have gone back again within this last month Good. to approach Good. them again. Good. Now, um, it would be totally unfair to condemn Nureen Warren Council for doing nothing, because they have been. Um, the, the, at the moment, we some of our programmes are coming from uh, a girl called Lorraine Morgan, in, who works for the council, yes. and she's providing us with healthy cooking tips. Wow. You know, uh, Reach Organisation, which is based in Ballybot, they are organising both physical you know, walks, cycles, but also um, actually cooking competitions where the men themselves plan, buy and cook. Sounds like, sounds like quite simply my life. That's, that's <laughs> what I do. I plan, I buy and I cook. And I, I, wash, I wash and iron my own shirts, my own clothes. And uh, it's, it's just my normality, you yes. know. Well, I can't wait for the winter to come in, so we only have to iron this bit. <laughs> you know, and the rest of it's going to be under a jumper. But we do have men that are, you know, they are widowed. Yeah. And we also have men that are retired from h for health reasons and retired for age reasons and that. And it's amazing. I mean, w one person in the group who's brilliant now was never inside a kitchen. Just his, his wife was a cook and he just sat and made the benefit of her, whatever she had made or took the benefit of that. And that man, three weeks ago, baked a cake. He, uh, and I'm not joking you, he baked a cake from scratch. Wow. You know, yeah, that's yeah. a major... Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. If you should say again, I, I, you know, I'm sort of conscious that I did sort of put a, a, a dig in at Newry Council. Um, they, they have been on the periphery supporting us. We've yeah. now got the councillors involved, which we hadn't done initially. We just went to the officials. See, it could be, uh, and it's, uh, it could very, very simply be that they don't know enough about you. Like, I, until you and I talked 12 weeks ago about men's sheds, I didn't know it existed in Newry. Sure. And the only reason I knew about men's sheds in, in Ireland was the brother-in-law of Gay Byrne, who was with me on the train going from Dublin to Cork. Yes. And he spoke about it. Okay. And uh, that kind of thing w w w w uh, uh, came into play on it. And uh, maybe they just don't know, Chris. Well, well actually, at, at the very beginning, at the inception of the men's shed, they were contacted. So you know, it, 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 ignorance in this, <laughs> in this um, subject, you know, it, it's a, there were... Yeah, um, a couple but I find, I find in life, I'm sort of coming across here, I know this, because I've tried and tested this. Sure. I know this is the formula. I would have very, very often pointed the finger and said to the council, you're not interested, you've ignored it and whatever else. But unless you're following up, following up, following up and following up again, yes. it's going to slip through the net. Most certainly. And it might well be the case that they're they're there and receptive at this time and maybe the letter that went two weeks ago will bear some fruit well maybe after this this morning they'll just pull everything out anyway you know well <laughs> it'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll give people the encouragement for it no, um, on, you it, know. I, I, again it's it's the the, the department of, uh, of economic development as well um, yeah. really it they're uh, they're really cutting anything voluntary anything community yeah. they're, they're does it cost a lot to run it uh, well, well rent-wise, um, which is our biggest expenditure, we did pay six months' rent. Yeah. Um, we got a one-off grant from the Southern Trust, um, and we paid off six months' rent, which brought us to the end of August. And that is the main... That's the main expense. That's the main. Now, occasionally, we, we get smaller grants for the like of... Like, for the digital photography, we've got a small grant yeah. to employ someone. Uh, the trips, we... we we're, we try to make the trips relevant. It's not just somebody coming in on a Monday morning and saying, right, we want to go to uh, yeah. Newcastle Beach. It has to have some relevance to yeah. either our situation, you know, the culture Indeed. or, or you know, the whole But isn't thing. the lovely thing about the trips, most of the people involved will all have their travel pass. <laughs> so <laughs> Indeed. you don't need any money for it. Well, I'm going to say the, the, the lockout, the Dublin lockout, uh, it's what, uh, 1913, Jim Larkin. Yeah. Uh, it's this Wednesday. We are going to Dublin. How are we getting to Dublin? using our passes. I recommend it, you know, because <laughs> I, I do it every weekend. I go down right, to the yeah. National Gallery. I enjoy that, or out right to the National Museum. And uh, you, you, you have such conversations on the train and things Absolutely. like that as you go, the place you go, the people you see. So you'll be going like a shatterbang, all of you together. All of us together. On the train. There are a number of people that are below 60, obviously, or about 65 for the, the Dublin bit of it. But uh, there are a number of people under that age, and we are subsidising the younger people because we dropped our age from 60 we dropped it to 45 because there were quite a few people had retired yeah 
early we retirement. Yeah, early and retirement. Presumably you perceive the need. Oh, absolutely, there, absolutely. You know. I mean, our, our, we are probably in around maybe two thirds older people, but we've yeah. got a good solid younger person, and there um, we feel there's, it, there's as much of a need for them as there is for the older people. That's interesting. They're cut adrift by the system. Yeah. Social isolation, um, really pick your benefits up every week or whatever, yeah. and really left. And you're, you're finding that 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 loneliness within that sector of the community, that aloneness where people have lost a partner or whatever. Most certainly. And in within early June, one of our members uh, had lost a partner um, and they, they just didn't know how to cope with it. Yeah. You know, it was one of those things where I know behind every great man there's a better woman. Yeah. And it's true. We, we tend to fall apart. Uh, loss will affect everyone, but men don't appear to have no, I, I'm generalising here, Rowan, by the way. <laughs> I'm generalising. I go back to ironing my own shirts here. <laughs> <in my> own <laughs> cooking, you know. no, some people, um, we, we, we might not be, our makeup isn't enough to yeah. cope uh, appropriately, shall we say, yeah. with um, bereavement or losing a job. And, you know, that has happened as well. Depression uh, of our membership. And, you know, I, I don't think I'm uh, betraying any confidences because it, it, it's a part of a... Uh, thing that we had done we, we yeah. did an audit and 75 percent of us all admitted to having some sort of a mental yeah um, I'm, I'm going to say mental illness but yeah. you know but isn't that it would not be a general enough statistic for for society generally if you're going through life uh, in the swings and roundabouts of life the thumps that you take uh, the things you have to overcome that it's a daily battle for most people unless I'm totally very very ill here it's a daily battle certainly for me to keep on an even keel and to pursue my uh, what I perceive to be what I uh, my natural gentle way yes I need to keep putting manners into myself because yes. I'm a cantankerous old yet so I've heard yeah but oh, uh, so yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. What yeah. do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you are right. Uh -huh. I mean, we all go through that. But some people are more able to cope with it than others. And yeah. we think the main shed is there as an extra support for the people that, you know, maybe don't have the coping skills. Like, you're a quite confident man. You know, you're very gregarious. You're very networking all of the time. Some people yeah, go into themselves. Mask of the clown, though. You it know, it it who's it to say what, uh, not, not ju judging the book by the cover. Yes, but then you come into our shed and you listen to other people telling their stories yeah. and you'll see that I have got the, the coping mechanisms yes. to get through. Some people are relying on information to try and deal with yeah. their situation. Yeah. I had 25 years working within uh, social work yeah. within uh, the, the Southern Trust and I think it's easier for me to pick up um, on people that are having difficulties Aye. rather than um, you know somebody that be sitting around in a group and not sort of picking up the and of course the intimacy of the the shed concept allows a uh, fairly fertile arena for that to, to come forth yes yeah. once you get through the initial uh, and I'm going to use the word embarrassment mm. um, but maybe it's just settling in period you feel that nobody's going to leave the shed well nobody's going to laugh at you within the shed number one the likelihood is that at least some people have gone through what you're going through mm. um, we you, nobody's going to go out and start here did you hear about so and so here's what he said it is so the, the group are so um, supportive of each other mm. they're I, I, I find it it's new to me I retired two years ago I was at a total loss as to what to do the shed got me up in the morning yeah i be honest with you you know it wasn't beyond the realms of possibility two o'clock in the afternoon I'd be getting out of bed wow and now I have for instance, this morning, I've been up since 8 o'clock for this. Tomorrow I'll be up for the, the, the socially. Yep. Wednesday will be up for Dublin. Yeah. And it gives a purpose to life. Absolutely. Yeah. You'll come back and talk to me in a month's time, will you? I certainly will. And we'll, we'll, do, we'll, still around. Do, we'll do a check on the uh, on where the council is and what's happening and all that sort of thing. Yes, I just felt I had to raise it. No, I mean, it was fair enough. It was, raised we are it was raised in a very positive way. And I think what you're saying quite simply is you're in need of help. And uh, most definitely. There is a, uh, there's precedent for local authorities helping in other areas of Northern Ireland so and, and I'm quite quite sure that our council would have a willingness to be involved if they're focused on it and something can be done but you're now getting the councillors involved so that's good too. We have the councillors involved yeah, and, and hopefully you know it's just a wee, wee bit of a, 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 a kick that oh. to, get it, to get everything started Rowan. Stay with me do we bid the people farewell because okay. our race has been run. Rowan Hand bidding you farewell 
Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Please, God, if there is a God, uh, we'll, we'll be back with you. Half past seven in the morning. Uh, that's Irish time. Half past seven to half past ten in the morning. And, you know, maybe not far distant from what uh, Chris was saying there. I, I offer you the guidance of my African friends uh, across the Niger. And they will tell you that when you've done your best and can do nothing more in the struggles you have between the immensities of life, rest your head in your hand and leave the rest to God. Go well, be happy, see you in the morning. Sean.